Well, hey guys, I'm gonna be, we're going to be in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, and like I've never seen it before, actually. Um, I'll go ahead and read it, and I'll go into why, I, why this was picked. So if, in Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an adulterer has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So then, that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And I'm going to stop there. Um, the reason that, uh, well, not the reason, but I know the Lord put this on my heart. Um, I was... Uh, and I love cell phones. They're great. I, I don't know how I did, lived without one for so long. And uh, my wife tried to say, we need to get them, we need to get them. And finally we did. And we got unlimited texting because my son loves the text. And it would just be very, very expensive otherwise. And it's like, um, and I love it because I get to talk to my nieces and my nephews and whatever, different people that I don't normally talk to. Um, because, again, it's, it's free. And it's awesome. And... Um, I got a text from my niece, and she said she was writing a song. I said, or she was recording a song, or, or uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Burning a song, burning a song on a disc. That's what it was. And I said, oh, really? Okay. And I didn't go into like, you know, I'm going to con condemn you. I know what type of music she listens to, and I just went along with, okay, that's fine. That's, you know. And I texted her back, and I said, hey, uh, you know, how's things going? You know, and this and that. And she said, well. So it's going good. Um, I said, uh, what CD are you burning? And she told me. And it was, I don't know, P. Diddy, I don't know, some rapper or whatever. But it's, the, the, the name of the song has curse words, I'll put it that way. Okay, it's, it, it's wrong. Well, she's 16 years old, I believe. Is that right, Dane? Yeah. You guys can pray for her. her name is Christina. Um, they came up here and lived with us for a year, um, years ago when she, she was little. And we've gone down there a couple summers in a row and uh, been able to be a light in a dark place, a very dark place. But they call themselves Christians. And um, then I was texting her another a week later, and I got a text, and I can't even say what was in the text. It was that bad. Um, but that wasn't the bad part. She was, she, I asked her, I said, well, is this acceptable to God? I mean, I really went into a long detail on my text of, you know, 
does God honor this? Is, is this honoring to God? Does, you know, is this acceptable to him? And I started to think about those words. And um, when I wrote her back and asked her, who, uh, she apologized, and she said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to send it to you. I'm like, you shouldn't send that to anybody, and nobody should be sending that to you. Who, by the way, who sent that to you? And here's where it broke my heart really strongly. Her father. Her father lives at home. I know him. His name is Mike. You can pray for him, too, as well. Um, and it's like, that was gut-wrenching because he does this all the time. And he's got a mouth, and I know it. And they've asked us, they said, well, what can we do to change our lives, you know? And, and why are things going so bad for us? And it's like, honor God. Love the Lord. Serve him. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to sin. Of course, we all sin. He who says he does not have sin is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But, so this is where, one of the things that stemmed from, and then there was another thing, and I'll get into it in a little bit, but, um, but it broke my heart that, I, that my 16-year-old niece, and I've offered to come up here and live with her. I really have. And she says she loves God, but the fruit's not there. The family says that they, you know, are Christians, but the fruit's not there. Um, but as I was looking at this, it starts out, it says, Therefore, be imitators... In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Well, as our pastor says, when, the, when you see therefore, you've got to wonder, what is therefore, therefore? Well, you've got to back up a little bit. And if you go into Ephesians chapter 4, I can start in 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And in 32 it says, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And I'm going to go back. I'll just rehash on a few things here. But the, the book of Ephesians, six chapters, is divided in half. Chapters 1, 2, and 3 are doctrinal. 4, 5, and 6 are practical. 1, 2, and 3 tell us where we sit. And I ask you, where do you sit? Where do you sit? Do you know him? Does he know you? Um, and 4, 5, and 6 tell us how to walk. Um, you must know where you sit before you can walk. You can't walk this walk on your own. It can't be done. There's no way. You'll fall every single time. You need the Spirit of the Lord. You need the power of the Lord. Um, and you need to know that you are forgiven. Or life will be works-oriented, such as religion, um, laws, regulations, just rules. Just, you know, it's a, it'll be a burden to you. It won't be the walk that God has for you. It, it'll be what you have for yourself. And you'll give up. Or you'll sit around sucking lemons, as we've heard before. Once you realize that the work has been done, and you can't earn God's merited favor, the grace starts. The love of God is there. That surpasses all understanding. It's there. The love is there for us. And this is something I heard at a, a day of encouragement a while back, um, about a month ago, and it really just did a, did, did a work in me. And it's something that everybody's probably heard before, and I shared it at a home fellowship before, but it's Jesus is not what you need. He is all you need. He is all, that's all we need is Jesus, really, if you think about it. That is, he's the bread of life. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and end. He's all. And if you guys want to uh, look at um, uh, that verse again, though, where it says 32, it says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And the first half of chapter 4 is on unity, and the second half of chapter 4 is on purity. All, and it's about all the way through um, 
where I ended up in, in, in chapter 5 on purity. And that's uh, how the Lord put, put that on my heart um, to, to go this route. Um, but it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Um, if you guys want to turn to Matthew... Chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And it tells us in here, it says, In this manner, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But the key to that with, with, with um, Ephesians uh, 4, uh, 31, 32 is forgiveness. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In order to be forgiven, you have to forgive. And if you guys want to turn to Exodus... Exodus 15... And the, the caption here is bitter water made sweet um, in, in my Bible. But it says in Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And let me, let me back up a little bit. Actually, this is, you know, Pharaoh and the horses, you know, they all drowned in the Red Sea. Um, the Israelites got through and... You know, Moses brought them through with the, with the work of God. God did it, but used Moses. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it is called Marah which literally means bitter. That's what it means. It means bitter. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Now, the people were just pulled out of an amazing event. I mean, it's just amazing. They're three days in the desert, and they're like, Okay, the God who just opened up the waters is no way is going to be able to supply for us. It's and actually, it's the opposite of what Eb was going through uh, when he was talking about Elijah. It's, it's the same, same thing, but different f format, because here, they're complaining. Elijah just, he said, hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust in the Lord, and no Lord's going to come through on this. And, but they were, they were bitter. They were bitter. They were angry. And I'll go on. It says, and the people complained against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do, do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statues, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on Egyptians, on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam where there, there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. Okay, they were three days in the, in the, in the wilderness. They were bitter. And Moses did the right thing because they were about to kill him. Man, you're leading us here. You brought us out here. And this is what you have for us? This is what you're giving us? He's like, 
they're ready to kill him. He did the right thing. He called out to the Lord. He prayed. And, you know, as I was looking at that, I was like, the, the bitterness, the anger, we make foolish decisions when we're in anger um, and, and bitterness. And it's like, how, how, could, how, how could Moses do anything but start to get angry back? He, they, they stepped on his toes. He was, he was angry. He was frustrated. But instead, he made the right decision. He said, he cried out to the Lord. And you know what? When we're angry and we're bitter at somebody, I know when I'm angry and I'm bitter at someone, the best thing I can do is pray. Is pray. Speak to someone, too, about it. But to pray first, to go to the Lord. And if you look at that, guys, it says, so he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. Where was there another tree in the Bible? The cross. We were bitter before we were believers. We were angry. We were, and, and some still, and even myself, I still struggle with that at times. But, um, but the tree is our forgiveness, and if we cannot forgive, we can't be forgiven. And I go to this, guys, because I told you there was two reasons. Well, I can't go into details, but I have talked to brothers about this, and this has been, it's been handled. But I had a situation, well, we had a situation in our family where I was going to kill someone. I asked my home fellowship to pray for me. I didn't tell them what. I just said, pray for me. Pray for our family. Pray. I was, I committed murder in my heart. There's no doubt, no, no doubt at all. I was prepared, I had it in my mind, to go out and purchase a pistol. I know it takes three days, four days, whatever it is. And, and, and I was really, really an angry man. I really was. And our loving pastor called me. I, I, he called me and he told me that he loved me and that he didn't go to jail. Why should I? And you guys know the situation with him. So I, I just went, wow. Hmm. And he said, bring another brother with you. And, but that wasn't what spoke to me. That, that did speak to me. He did speak to me. He did, he did get to me. But God, I cried out to God, and he spoke to me, and he told me, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you in with love and kindness. I love that person. Do you? And who are you that you can't love them as much as I love them? I, I loved you so much I died for you. And so I did. I got another person, a, a couple of people actually, and um, I had a, a crew of people praying. Not no dis, no. Any nobody knew anything. Just pray. That's what, no specifics, anything. And God saw us through it because I was able to go and share the gospel from my heart. I had the word of God right there, man. I never had to open the Bible once. God's spirit just moved upon me, and the brother that was there with me, and the sister as well, and my wife. And, it, and it, was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. God just, wow. And I, seriously, I, I really had murder in my heart. I had it so much so, I had it planned out. It was there. I was like, wow. Um, I even looked at the hammer when I was getting in the car. I did. I looked at the hammer in my garage and went, hmm. But I didn't. And I can't say I didn't. God, you... God did it. I mean, I, Ed knew. I texted him. I was, I was texting people all over. I was like, you know, pray for, pray for us. Pray for, pray, pray. And God is faithful. If you guys want to turn back to uh, Ephesians. So it's bitterness and unforgiveness before the tree. And after you see the tree... It's time to forgive. Or you're living a horrible walk with the Lord. I don't care what it is. I was molested by my stepfather. And you know what? It hurt. And I used to wake up and want to kill him every night. I'd wake up sw swinging and punching. You know what? I was able to share the gospel with him. He didn't receive it, but I was able to share the gospel with him and, and just tell him that. 
God loves him, but he doesn't love what he's doing. And I used discernment because I had my kids with me, and he's like, oh, I'll just take the kids down there w- with me. You can go ahead and go down to the restaurant. No, I'll, I'll, I'll be, we'll be with our kids. Thank you very much. I'm, you know. And uh, yeah, that was, that was a real tough one. That was a real tough one. I, and you know what? I don't, I'm not bitter over, over it anymore. I love him. I know he's a sick man. And he's either, I don't know if he's in hell yet or not, but I, I know he wasn't walking with the Lord, and he didn't want anything to do with it. He had a form of religion, but he denied the power of. In two, it says, In walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Well, you guys know John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I said, Jeremiah 31, 3, you know, the, um, he has loved us with an everlasting love. He's drawn us in with loving kindness. God is all about love. Everything is love. He doesn't love what we do when we're disobedient to him, but he loves us. He loves the sinner, hates the sin. And yes, God can hate. He can hate the sin. How should we walk? Well, if you look at Ephesians chapter 5, just over a little bit, uh, verse 15, it says, See then that you walk circumspectedly, not as fools, but as wise. That's cautiously. That's what that means, circumspectedly. When I looked it up in the Greek, it's cautiously. If you guys want to turn there, Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. I'm going to back it up a little bit and see those. And 3, it says, We give thanks to God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is all also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. We're accountable. We're held accountable. If you want to turn to 1 John. 1 John 1 7 it says, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. He is the word. Jesus is the word. He's not in us. If, if we make him out to be a liar, which you, we can't, but we would just be going against the grain. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through the Son. There is only one way. In 3, in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3, it says, But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as it is fitting for saints. Fornication and uncleanliness leads to covetousness because it's greedy. And it's destroying and wrecking is what it is. It's destroying and it's wrecking. I've torn my life apart with that stuff. Torn my life apart. I praise God that he's restored me 
and that he continues to show me that how much he loved me and, and what he's done for me. But two unmarried souls being joined, you become, an, you become an empty shell. You're ripping yourselves off if that's what you're doing. I mean, dealt with some people not too long ago um, with, uh, well, we're married in God's eyes. Really? What's, what does that mean, married in God's eyes? I mean, you're married because you say you're married because you've been living together for 12 years or 10 years or whatever it may be? No, that's not true. There's no commitment there. There's no commitment. I know. My marriage was completely shot, done. I thought it was over. And I say this, it's incredible because that woman right there, my wife, Dana, she's incredible. She had the love to keep our family together when I didn't. And she had just unforgiveness in her heart. You know, ladies, if man, you want to or you want to know about unforgiveness, talk to my wife. She's had to forgive me a lot. Tons of things. And just yeah. Sometimes I don't understand it, but I, I do, I do when I think of Christ because that's, how I, that's what I see because she does have that. She has that love to, to, to be able to, un, to forgive, to set it aside and move on. And it's through our, our pastor and his wife as well because they, I, Chick basically came to me and said, oh, marriage is over. Get the Turner account ready. I was in debt recon at the time and it's done. Uh, they're finished. Um, and when I heard those words, it really struck me really hard and it it woke me up and it was that you know what wow i'm going to do the same thing my father did i'm going to do the same thing this one you know and i said i'd never do that and i'm like and not for my dignity but because of christ because i had christ in me and i knew that what I, things i were doing were wrong but god's restored that the, the years the locusts have eaten he's restored Does, does God forgive you? Yes. And there is repentance. There is. But true repentance, and it's an ongoing thing. Repentance is an ongoing thing. It's not something that you do once. You know, I, I heard someone say at one time, where you, oh, I just, you just take one shower in your life? No. Over and over again. We need to go to the Lord and ask forgiveness. Look at David. Lord, I have sinned against you and you alone. I mean, there's consequences where you need to go to other people too as well, but first to the Lord and ask for that repentance. And, and true repentance, you know, it's godly sorrow. It's like, wow, Lord, I've, I've crucified you one more time. In, four, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4, it says, Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. You know, what's interesting, too, is that, I don't know about you guys, but, man, I've heard some jokes when I was younger. I mean, I was a little kid. I was being babysat and things like that. And I've heard jokes when I was in fifth grade and seventh grade, tenth grade, whatever. And some of those things have been there and stuck and stuck. They're in my head. They're, they're there. Now, they don't come out. I don't say them anymore. But they're there. And it just comes up just like, just like a, mu a song, you know. A song will come up just like that. Boom. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I was just praising the Lord, and now I'm singing ACD in, in, my, in my head. I'm like, where did that come from? I know I'm dating myself, but where did that come from? You know, it's like from the enemy, because he's alive and well, and he desires to destroy us. And then, of course, another praise, word, praise song comes in my head, and that, you know, and clears it up. But, but scriptures, I can't tell you guys how many scriptures, and not tons, but a lot of scriptures I've memorized, but you know what? There's some of them I've forgotten. It's amazing. And we were just talking about this last night um, at Home Fellowship. Uh, someone said they have a hard time sleeping, and, so, and, and he's and has been saying that for a while, and then he said, well, now I listen to the Word when I go to sleep. I put it on a, a CD, and I listen to the Word. That's an awesome idea. But what, what do you think the enemy's going to do? He's going to put you to sleep so you don't hear the Word now. First he keeps you awake, so you're miserable, and, then, and that's just how he works. 
But you can, over, you can overcome those things. Because greater is he that is in me that is in this world. And, you know, the thing is with the jokes around the office, the, you know, the water fountain, I mean, uh, I, I very rarely do I ever watch any TV at all anymore. It's just, and that's just the conviction on my heart. Um, but it's like, it's just it's garbage. Fornication, there's dirty jokes, there's this, there's that. It's like I, homosexuality, all these different things. I don't need it. And the jokes around the office, you know what? We've heard our pastor say it. Today, you laugh at them. Tomorrow, you're participating in them. Mark, you're, you're doing it. And that's, I know I've been guilty of that. M- many a time. When I worked third shift, man, I was just, a Christian? What? What's that? I put that card aside while I go to work. But not today. In verse 5 of chapter 5, it says, For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an adulterer, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. And this this was this was tough. This was like wow. This is Wow, okay. Let me read that again. For this you know that no fornicators, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an adulterer has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. And in the King James Version, tormongers, fornication. A man who prostitutes his body, and I say man, but mankind. And it went into um, intercourse and all that. It talked about different things. Um, But unclean person, in a moral sense, unclean in thought and life. Covetous man, one eager to have more, especially what belongs to others. Greedy. And you know what, guys? That's exactly what I did and exactly what any one of us do when we decide to go out and have sex before marriage because you're having sex with someone else's husband or wife. We're greedy. We take what's not ours. And that's, that's wrong in God's eyes. I love the, the, what I've seen around the body here of, of the... the um, the faithfulness of, of courtship, because you know what? If it does, if it's not from God, then you know what? You can st- you can still be brothers and sisters in Christ. And you can still, and it can happen even with with the with, with slipping up and, and doing things, you know, having sex, or whatever. But it, it it's so much nicer when when you don't, and you just realize, well, maybe it wasn't the Lord, and okay, there's a little embarrassment there, but not as much as if there was something else that gone on. God is faithful. And I just see so much going on in this world. With, and I know you guys do too as well with, with, with TV, with movies and all that thing. Um, it's just amazing. One who embraces a prostituted life, such as reading magazines they shouldn't, because prostituting doesn't mean just selling your body. That can be one of the things. But reading magazines you shouldn't be reading. Um, 900 calls. You know, or 800 calls, calling, you know, the sex lines and stuff like that. Movies and internet. It, and he said, and, and I just put a highlight here, will not inherit. Will not inherit. And I'm not talking about that if you do these things and you sin you may, and you get knocked off the square and you get back on, you, you repent and stuff like that. That's different. But if you live this life, if you're living this life, you know who you are. You know, and God knows. You know, um, it's, it's there, man. It's, it's, a lot, it's crazy. I mean, I, I'm just looking at some of the things that I saw for this study. I was like, wow. I mean, nothing bad, but I mean, looking at the statistics and things like that was like gut-wrenching. And it's getting worse. 
So you know who you are. Your heart tells you. The Spirit tells you where you stand. And I'm not talking struggling. Struggling is different. If you're struggling, you're asking your brother to pray for you or sister to pray for whatever, that's different. That's different. But it's the day in and day out and the living in it. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what his word says. I didn't write this. This is talking about a way of life. You can't love God and sin. You can't. You, you, you can't. You either love one or hate the other. I mean, what, what is it? Right? This is quoted by others, so-called, I put so-called Christians. God knows you and I, and we need to indulge ourselves. Besides, the body will burn anyway. Only our spirit moves on. It's okay. God understands. And I put a big wrong. It's wrong. It's not of the Lord. These are things that God detests. It has nothing to do with. It's not acceptable to the Lord. Like I started when I started with the message. Acceptable. It's not acceptable to the Lord to do these things. And this was, this was really a kicker. I didn't realize it, but, um, and I'm guilty of it. I've been there. I, I praise the Lord that he's delivering me from that. I'm not going to say I'm completely, because I, there are th- things that I've, I've watched and stuff like that. But for the most part, more and more, things have been taken out of my life, and I'm not missing them. I'm really not missing them. I have more time to read. I have more time to hang out with people. i got more time to pray. i got more time to do things, you know, around the house, whatever. But 50% of PG-13 and R-rated movies are sold to evangelical and fundamental Christians. 50%. And that might be a little bit on the far fetch because that might even be older, a little bit older than because it didn't have a date on it. So it might even be up higher now. I know it's going to get there. Um, and you guys think TV's bad here? Man, I went to Ireland for work. Man, it's clean here compared to there. And it's coming. That stuff's going to happen here eventually. It's already on cable, but it, it'll be on the regular mainstream. And really, really bad. And partakers. Um, when I looked it up, it's, it's with, beside, and a company. Sharing in or partaking. When we, when we, so to speak, go to a movie or we buy a movie or we rent a movie or whatever it is, and we're watching someone commit adultery or someone commit fornication or someone commit an uh, 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 act of lesbian or sex or, or homosexual, whatever, whatever it is, fill in the blank, um, cursing, all the different things. That, that's what we're doing. We're partaking in it. Um, we're whoremonging, fornicating, and adulterizing in their activities. We're, we're, we're supporting it. And what I mean by supporting it is that financially, and we help their ratings get up, go up. That gives them more money to make more. And that's what we do. And I, man, this was this was heavy. It was really wow. It's like we encourage Hollywood just to hey make another movie. Do yeah, do another one this way. Do this one. One of the things I saw on the internet was that I don't know if you guys know this, but TV stations they battle, they have battles on who can be the most corrupt. They hey look. I'll get, uh, give me this station and I'll do this. You do that and I'll do this. Like, I don't know about you guys know that, but Budweiser really does pretty clean commercials most of the time. But Coors has a lot of girls on it. Well, they did it because Budweiser was number one beer, s- selling beer, and Coors wanted to get up there. So they thought, well, we'll, we'll, we'll catch their eyes. We'll get their eyes. They'll watch us. They'll, they'll start to drink our beer. That's what they did. Those are things that they, they, they plot these things. They scam, they scam them. Warner Brothers... Beep, beep, beep. That's all, folks? Yeah, I used to love Warner Brothers, but you know what? They're corrupt as all get out. Um, in, in verse 8 of chapter 5, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things 
which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The King James is, is uh, prove, to test and examine, prove, scrutinize. What's acceptable? Scrutinize it with the Word of God. Check and see. Is this from God? You know, is this of the Lord? Is this glorifying God? And there's a lot of things that are just point blank we know we shouldn't do, and we do them. Turn from those things. Um, you know, search your heart. Search my heart, Lord, and see if there be any wickedness in me. And then remove it, Lord. Remove it. Get it out of there. And he will. If you guys want to turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians, it's just a few back. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. What's acceptable, Lord? You know, and I wrote this to my to my niece and uh, texted, I should say, it took a couple texts, but And we urge you, actually I'm going to start in 12. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are un unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourself and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecy, tell all things Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. And I said, what is acceptable to the Lord? Not acceptable to Ken, not acceptable to, to Ed, to Bernie, to whoever, fill in the blank. It doesn't matter. It's what's acceptable to the Lord. And this hit me like a ton of bricks because this is what the Lord gave me when, when I got that text. I was like, wow, what's acceptable to the Lord? Acceptable, well-pleasing, agreeable, those things that are pleasing. Sweet aroma. You know when they had to burn offerings and the, and the incense in Leviticus? It went through the Lord's nostrils. It went up to his nostrils. It was to the Lord. It was under the Lord. It was a sweet-smelling sacrifice to the Lord. And that's what our lives should be. In 15, chapter 5, verse 15, see, it says, See then that you walk circumspectedly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. There it is again. I mean, evil. I just read it in Thessalonians, but the days are evil. Perilous times are here. We're, we're in them. It's just getting worse. I don't think it's going to get any better. The world is out there, and we're in the world, not of the world. We're to be that light, that beacon, that shines. In 17, it says, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Give thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. 
And fear God. Hate sin and persevere. Um, that's strong. I remember when that came across in, in, uh, in our church, and it was, that's a strong statement. Fear God, hate sin, and persevere. Ask him for the strength to move, to go, to move on. F- fear God in a, in, a, in a good way. Say, hey, Lord, you know what? I fear you. Show me how to walk the way you walk. Teach me the way, the way that you walk. Show me. And if there is any wickedness in me, take it out. Get rid of that, as I think Tim says, that yucky stuff or whatever. <laughs> Get rid of that, that stuff. Get rid of it. We don't need that in us. Time is short. Things are happening, you know, circumspectively, cautious. Walk in caution. I mean, well, my clock died, so maybe if it's okay. Yeah. And I, I'm just going to hit on this because I got a little bit of time, but it's, it's wives in 22. It says, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is her, the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she she be or she would she should be their own but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Just as the Lord does the, ch- the church, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. And the only thing I got to say on that, guys, is I went to that dinner um, that Don Reipster put out. Um, well, actually, Dean Cook's church put out, uh, Calvary Chapel Solid Rock, um, over at Mike Fernandez's church. I went to that Valentine dinner. And the one thing that stuck out with me the most, and, man, I need help in this area a lot because, I mean, th- there are things that, you know, they get co- in there, little foxes get in and, and try to bite at different things. I mean all kinds of stuff that can happen but you know what one thing I took from there was that and I think he called them speed bumps if I remember right I know that's what I called them when he said it because it just rung with me speed bumps your wives your husbands are going to say things and do things that irritate you whether it's the toilet he talked about it the toilet paper roll being put on the other way and you like it the other way (laughs) and you laugh but it's true um the shower, I had to take a cold shower this morning, praise the Lord. I mean, I did, I praised the Lord. I re- normally would get really angry, but I just praised the Lord because, well, I knew where I was going. And I was like, I just, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Speed bumps, speed bumps. And I, my wife said, what would you say? I said, yeah, speed bumps. <laughs> because you know what? Be thankful. If you're married, be thankful you have a, a, a wife or be thankful you have a husband. And I remember how he said that, and that just really rung in with me because you know what? We complain and we whine. You know what? They can, they, what if they leave? What if they died? What if you made a big complaint and argument with them and then they died that day? I mean, these are just things that he brought, and I'm just like, sp- sp- speed bumps, speed bumps. I like that. It's easy. It's simple. Keep it simple, Stu, but that's for me <laughs> because I can um, very easily complicate things. But, yeah, just speed bumps. And be thankful for to the things that they do that irritate you. Be thankful. And that was a blessing. That was really awesome. Um, So little things like that that really are. So praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your whole word, Lord, that you, Father, you, um, 
You are an awesome God, Father. You love us, Father, with that everlasting love. Lord, you have drawn us in with loving kindness, Father. You um, desire the best for us, Lord. You desire, Father, that we do walk circumspectedly, Lord, that we do um, walk in righteousness, Lord, that we do walk in the ways that you walked, Father. You also are a forgiving, Father, Lord, and you do love us, Father, um, but you hate, Lord, when we do the things that are not glorifying you. And Lord, I pray, Father, that each and every one of us, including myself, Lord, here today, would just take these scriptures, Father, and search them for themselves. And if there be any wickedness in them, Lord, that they would um, reveal it to the light and they would walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with one another. And I love you and I praise you, Jesus. Amen.